a second Ajax example and it's good a lot of times to go over a second example because you can kind of see you know what's in common with the first example and what's different and that's useful so we'll go over a straightforward version of a quiz I think the first version that we look at only has one question and then we will look at expanding it to do more and to have multiple questions. So let me pull up the example and we'll go from there. It's going to say the first thing you see right off, but you don't see the first thing right off. So let me turn on the projector so you can see the first thing. First thing you see in this example, as soon as this comes up, In the previous example, we had an HTML page that's submitted to a PHP page. All right. So, the HTML page was the form. And it had JavaScript in it to invoke the asynchronous request and get the results and process the results. The PHP was a server-side component, and it grabbed the request, and it produced the necessary output. In this case, you notice we don't have an HTML and a PHP file. We have two PHP files. So grade is the server-side component that is going to go in and produce the results, going to actually grade the quiz and send the results back to the client. Index PHP is actually the form, the client. Just a question, and this really doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Ajax, but why would I make that form, the plain old form, which really just consists of HTML and JavaScript, why would I make that form a PHP file instead of an HTML file? In case you want to add PHP later. In case I want to add PHP later. All right. So, for example, I don't remember off the top of my head how this is written. Um, maybe the quiz is hard-coded. You know, 1 plus 1 equals what? All right, and you put in the answer. So maybe the quiz is hard-coded. All right. I could, for example, retrieve a quiz from a database. I could even have something where you could select the level of difficulty and have the quiz generated based on the level of difficulty. 
Do you want easy, average, or difficult? And if you pick difficult, I could pick from questions in a database, for example, or in an array, or in some sort of data structure. I could display the questions that were tagged as difficult, if you picked easy. That way we could add a server-side component to the generation of the quiz, in addition to the grading of the quiz. The other aspect of this, and I'm not taking advantage of it here, but it's a big one, is that uh, I could put include files in, in it if it's a PHP file. All right, So I could create include files for like the common elements on my page, the navigation, the header, the footer, any section of the page that has common code that will be repeated among every page, I could create an include file for, and then I have the advantage of not having to change every page, but just changing the include file if something about that changes. So there's a lot of reasons, a lot of good reasons. So if I'm doing a PHP project, I will make every page a PHP page, even if one of the pages happens to be entirely static HTML. All right? Even if, even something silly, like if I had ads or something on this page, I might want some server-side functionality. At any rate, let's go and see how this works. I go and call index.php. And I get a quiz. One plus five equals six. Grade it. Correct. One plus five equals four. Wrong. All right. Nothing great um, about that, but it does its job. All right. We can later expand this if we want to. We can expand it from two perspectives. We could make the quiz um, multiple questions. We could make the quiz have different kinds of questions, um, and so on. But let's look at the basic mechanics of this so that we have that down before we go and extend this any further. So, let's look at the have an array here. Okay. So even though this is acting like a static page, this actually has a potential to be dynamic. I have an array of my two numbers that I want to add. Add in one and add in two. I have a display form. Display form goes in, and I declare those variables as global, which means that they're accessible. The ones that I declared outside here are accessible throughout this function. I'm going in, and I'm looping through for i equals 0, i less than count, i plus plus, and I'm printing the question add n 1 plus add n 2. I'm then creating a text box that has a name of answer followed by the number of the question. The number of the question starting uh, entered by zero. Uh, starting with zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you clarify clarify that count again? Uh, um, uh, right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Count is asking how many elements are in the array. So, for example, I have an array. In a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm generating addition questions. All right? And this is the first number to add. This is the second number to add. And right now, there's only one element in that array. So I'm only getting one question. But I have the potential built into this to display multiple questions. All right? Because this is an array. This is not just a simple.
multiple variable. Because it's an array, I can loop through. And I can generate the second question, and the third question, and so on, simply by adding more elements to this list. And so what this is doing is this is displaying the form. This is displaying the form by looping through and displaying each element of the array as a question. And then I'm creating a text box for it. So, so, so each element of the array as a question, does that mean if you had a third one, it would be like 1 plus 5 plus whatever that third number is? Well, I would have to change the code to do that. I could do that. What I'm thinking of is adding is like doing this. And if I do that, the first question would be 1 plus 5. The second question would be 3 plus 8. So I'm adding questions by adding elements to the array. Each, These are called parallel arrays because the zero element in one matches up with the zero element in the other. The element one matches up with element one. So each of these respective elements forms an addition question. Right now we'll keep it simple and just do the one. And later on we'll go and we'll add a second and a third. All right. So we're looping through and we're creating those questions. And we're displaying the results. All right. On my submit button, button submit, I on click, I'm calling grade quiz. Okay. And I'm sorry, that's not a submit button, it's just a plain old button. I misspoke. It's not a submit button because remember, we don't use submit buttons when we're invoking an AJAX request, we use just a plain old button because we're not submitting an HTTP request, we're making a, we're writing JavaScript to generate an XML HTTP request. So on click, we call grade quiz. Look at what grade quiz does. Grade quiz is our basic AJAX functionality. I open up my request, I'm calling grade.php, and I'm sending answer zero on the query string along with the value of document get element by ID answer zero dot value. I then set my callback function, handle response. So when the status changes, I call the handle response method, and then I actually go and invoke the request. I have the code up in here to make the request object initially, just like I did before. Question. Um, if your page had, like, say we have, like, eight fields we're submitting, would you just, if you that, I'm sorry, that little query string you custom write where you use, like, the get element by ID, would you just expand that and have to get element by ID for each one? Yes. Yes, that would be the brute force way to do it. You could do it that way. The other way we could do it is we could be clever and we could write a loop to loop through all of them. If we knew the number of questions, which we do, right? How do we know the number of questions? Because of the number of the elements in the array. All right? The, uh, on that query string, mm -hmm. PHP question mark answer zero. Mm -hmm. It was a little fuzzy on, on answer zero, uh, where that's coming from again. Well, we have to call things something on the query string, right? Okay. So what I'm doing on the query string is I'm calling each answer. This is a little bit, th this, this code is actually sort of in an awkward state <laughs> because it's halfway between being handling multiple and only handling one question. I have to call it something on the query string. 
So I'm calling it answer zero to be the first question. Because remember, with arrays, you start with zero. Answer one is the first is the second question. Answer two would be the third question, and so on. So we just replace zero with i. We, yeah, eventually, we're going to replace zero by i and loop through that many times and generate. Here, in the response, we're looking to see if the status is 4. If it is, we're looking at the response text. The response text is either going to be yes or no. If it is yes, we are going to set the little message to correct. If it is not yes, we're going to set the little message next to the question as incorrect. Notice also, the message area is also labeled answer, answer error 0. That way, I can loop through when I have multiple questions on the quiz. All right? And I can look at, yes, you know, I might get a string back, y, comma, n, comma, y, comma, y, comma, y, indicating that they got the first question right, the second question wrong, the third, fourth, and fifth question right. So again, this, this, is, uh, this example sort of is in a, a goofy uh, state. All right? Um, but we'll go through with it anyhow. This is, this is sort of halfway between generating multiple questions and just doing one question. Let's run this and let's look at the HTML that you get. All right. So if we go and view page source for this, we do a refresh and view page source. Notice what we get. There's all our JavaScript stuff. Notice what we get in the form. We get 1 plus 5 equals text box answer 0, ID answer 0, value nothing. We get a span called answer error 0. And then we have our button to submit. That button to submit calls grade quiz which invokes the AJAX um, request to the server. Couple of things. First of all, we have a no script tag. What does a no script tag do? Yes, it does. And how, specifically, how does it work? Yeah, if there's no JavaScript, that's what it displays. So if we were to turn JavaScript off, we would get a message on the end, you don't have JavaScript en uh, enabled, so you can't run this quiz. Okay? Because this requires JavaScript to work. All right? What is that tag? No, this is an HTML tag. They made a tag just for this situation. All right? so that we could go and say, now, I could, if I wanted to take this further, and maybe we will in subsequent uh, classes, I could put in there something other than a message. I could put in there a submit button that would submit it to a server-side script, all right, and would not use an AJAX request, but would do sort of an old school request. I could if I wanted to take it that far. Pardon me? If you want to be nice, yeah. Okay, let's look at the server side code for this. The server side code is again ready for multiple answers in the array, right? Because it has a matching array of 1 and 5, and we are looping through. And we are putting out a Y if the answer is correct, and a no if the answer is false. We're actually doing the math. Correct answer equals add in 1 plus add in 2. 
So we're doing the computation. And if that comp computation matches the answer that the user has specified, then we're in business. All right, let's do what we talked about last time and break it down and look at it a component, a piece at a time. Let's look at what the client is sending to the server. Let's look at how the server processes it. And finally, let's look at the response that comes back. So first thing I'm going to do, like I did last time, is I'm going to look at how the server side works. So if I type in the URL... I put an answer zero equals four. What should I expect to see on the screen? Wrong. Yeah, some indication that it's wrong. All right. Actually, I'm going to see an and, not the word wrong, but it's going to say and that it's not correct. And there you go. What if I put the right answer in? And what was the right answer again? Six. I'm going to see a Y. All right. What if I put an answer one up on the query string? There is no second question, right? So what if I give it a, an extra answer? I don't know what's going to happen. It disregards it. Why does it disregard the second answer? Because, you're right, to be more precise, we are looking for the number of answers as dictated by the number of elements in that array. Since we only have one element in the array, we are only looking for one answer. Answer zero because we're starting i equal to zero, we're doing i as long as it's less than the count of that array, and we're incrementing i by one each time. So we're only looking for answer zero. If there's anything else on the query string, that gets ignored. Okay? The idea here is, is we've looked at this and we've made sure that the server side works the way that we expected. All right? Forgetting about this extra bit for a second. We've made sure that it works so that if we give answer zero as the right answer, we get the right answer. If we give answer zero as the wrong answer, we get an indication that it's the wrong answer. So this is a URL that we ought to be creating. grade.php answer equals the value of the text box. Let's make sure we are doing that. And I'm going to make sure we're doing that by putting in an alert box right before the request that's going to output out the URL that this is going to be calling. Notice again, we have a little bit of inconsistency. The PHP is sort of in position to handle multiple answers, but the JavaScript isn't yet. Okay, so I'm putting an alert there. I'm going to save it. And now, I hit refresh. I put the answer in and click grade. I get the alert that says grade, 
I can't copy this, but grade.php question mark answer zero equals six, which is exactly what which is exactly what the URL should be. So we know that that part of it is working. I can put another alert in here to see what we're getting back. And I can alert that response text to make sure that it's getting back the right value from the server. Sure enough, when I do this, there's a request I'm making, which matches what I'm expecting. There is the answer I'm getting back from the server, which matches what I'm expecting, right? Since I got the question right, I'm getting a Y. If I put in a wrong answer, the query string is still correct, and I'm getting back an N. I do apologize that this example is sort of midway between the two, midway between hard-coded one question. The JavaScript is hard-coded to expect only one question. The PHP is a little smarter, and it is, uh, is in a position to generate multiple questions. The JavaScript can't handle that yet, though. So I do apologize because that could be a little confusing for you. All right. But we'll go and we'll fix that by making the JavaScript work with multiple questions as well. Before we do that, though, this is pretty boring the way it's displayed. We get wrong or we get right. It would be nice instead if we did something like changing the style of this. Or maybe even changing an image on the page. A happy face and a frowny face. Okay. Let's get a happy dog picture. That one, it looks like the happiest one. This one looks more like a crazy dog than a happy dog. So, <laughs> yeah, we better resize it. We will. And let's look for an image of a sad dog. Let's just find a picture of a dog. Who is neither happy or sad? That looks pretty neutral. Oh, that actually looks too happy.
So what I'm going to do is, I want to do two things. All right. I want to change the, 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 the picture of the image. It's going to originally start out as neutral. I'm going to change it to happy or sad. And I'm going to change the style of the message to indicate if it is correct or incorrect. So, here's our three images. Let me go into paint and resize this. for more reasons than simply to look at pictures of cute dogs. Although that's a good reason in itself. All right. We're doing this to show you that the client has its role and the server has its role. The server's role is to just give the data. And in this case, the data is quite simply a Y or an N. All right? Yes, it's correct. No, it's not correct. Now, we could choose to display that to the user any number of different ways. Right now, we are simply displaying a message saying right or wrong or correct or wrong. But we could do a lot more than that. Remember... When we get the answer back from the server, we have all the capabilities of JavaScript at our disposal. We can manipulate the existing page any way we want. All right? So, I can change styles on things just like I did in the JavaScript section of this class. I can change the URL of an image. All right? From the neutral looking dog to the happy or sad looking dog. So, this allows for a lot of flexibility, all right? The server doesn't get into the way the page looks. The server simply responds back with correct, incorrect. It's the client's job to go and format that, which means that we could change the way that the client displays it without messing up the way the server is grading the quiz. So, let's go in here. And, let me rename some of these. Happy. Sad. And neutral. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to put in my answer message, I'm going to put I'm going to initialize that image to neutral dog. Give it an ID. All right. Uh, did you want neutral.jpg? I do want neutral.jpg. <laughs> Got caught up in the dog thing. A new image type dog, exactly. All right. So if I'm not mistaken, I already have two styles defined here. I just am not using it. I have a right and a wrong. So, 
If they get it right, I can Actually, we're going to set the inner HTML, so I'm going to put this outside of this. All right. I can set the class name. get it wrong, I can set the class name to wrong. Pretty sure that's what I call the styles. Yeah, it's right and wrong. So let's save this and let's try this. There's a dog pick. I haven't moved that over to the server yet, but I'm just going to test the style bit of it. So I type in the wrong answer. I get wrong formatted using that style. I type in the right answer. I get the correct indication. All right, let me get rid of these alerts because they've served their purposes. And let me put the dog pictures up on my server. saved it. Alright, there we go. Alright. How do we change our picture to the proper dog now? change anything on a page in JavaScript? What do we do first? We get element by ID. We point to the thing that we want to change. And the way that we typically point to the thing that we want to change is document get element by ID. Then what do we do after that? Edit the inner HTML is one possibility, but with an image, if you remember, an image doesn't have an inner HTML. Because an image is, has a start tag and an end tag all wrapped up into one. So we, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. So how do I refer to the URL part of the image? Dot the, the SRC. SRC. So document get element by ID. What did I call that image? Call that image image G, IMG0. Dot SRC. 
URC equals, and then I put in the value of the URL. And then for the sad dog, I do the same thing, except I put the value of sad. All right, put in answer four. Wrong. I did not move it over. Save it. And... Move it over. There we go. All right. Put the wrong answer in. We're looking at the sad dog. Put the right answer in. We're looking at the happy dog. All right. The reason I did this, again, it's kind of a goofy example, but is to illustrate that each of the components of this has its role. Notice that, let me, let me phrase this a different way. Notice that the server did not return the image of the dog to display. All right. The server did not return an image tag or the name of the image or anything like that. That's a client side thing. The way specifically you are going to show to the user this answer is correct, this answer is incorrect, that is up to the client to decide that. It's not the server's job to do that. The server's job is simply to provide the data. And in this case, what is the data? It's a list of Y's and N's to show that they've got it correct or they've got it incorrect. In this case, it is just um, um, one Y and N because we only have the one question. Um, the client, on the other hand, could then choose to format that a bunch of different ways. All right. Maybe we don't have dog and cat. Or maybe we don't have dog pictures. Maybe we have cat pictures. Or... Maybe, maybe we don't even show individually if they've got it correct or not. Maybe we just show a total. You got 9 out of 10 correct. All right. Maybe we don't even show the individual ones right and wrong. Maybe that's not what we want to get. You know, uh, that maybe that, uh, when we write this quiz, that's not our goal to show which ones they got right or wrong, but give them a chance to go and correct them and try again. All right. The point is, is once the client gets back the raw data, all right, the client can then choose to present that however makes sense for the particular application. So there's, a, again, there's a clean separation between the data, the content, and how it's going to be displayed. So the server is responsible for simply providing the data. The client is going to give the, um, is going to display it the way it sees fit. Going back to the temperature example last time, we could draw a thermometer if it was in a different temperature range and, and show where the mercury was in it. We could draw a, we could show a sunny day image if it was, if it was a high temperature, uh, a snow image if it was a low temperature. We can represent that a bunch of different ways, again, that falls into the responsibility of the client. All right. A couple things before we finish today. There's one thing that is, there's one glaring issue with this related to the generation of the quiz. These arrays are hard-coded in both pages. Okay. Where should the value of the arrays be instead? In an include file. All right? Because I could have in my form page 1 and 5, in my grade page 1 and 6. Ooh, you'd get it wrong if you probably typed in the right answer. All right? That's one of the reasons for include files. All right, it's a guarantee there's consistency. So instead of me putting this, these two arrays in two different places, I want to put the array in one place. 
I want to put it in an include file. And then I'll include that file wherever it's needed. All right. I could, in fact, we'll do this next week. We'll, we'll do all these things next week. One of the things that we could do next week is we could really get the multiple question bit going. Okay? We'll, we'll finish that through and not have it half-baked. All right? Second thing we could do is we could actually have a couple different include files with different questions based on the difficulty. So you select the question, you select the difficulty, and it will show you either the easy, medium, or hard questions. We'll see how we're doing on time. If we have time, we'll do that next week. Any questions about this? Question again regarding that count. Yes. I guess I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Now, if I change the count from dollar sign add in one to add in two, would it flip it from one plus five to no. five plus one? No. Because the count, all the count is doing is it's saying how many are there. There's one in this array, there's one in this array. So, either way, it's going to do this block of instructions one time. Now, if you had one element in this array and two elements in this array, you got a problem, right? Because you don't have matching numbers to do the addition. So, these again are what are sometimes called parallel arrays, where you have to make sure that the number of elements in one array matches the number of elements in the other array. Another reason for only having it in one place, right? It's easier to make sure you got it right one time than make sure you got it right two times. What would flip them? Well, we're looking at the server side code here. In the client side code, what would flip them? If I change this to add in two and this to add in one. Because that's what's actually displaying. Yeah, this is simply counting how many times it go through. And since there's the same number in each array, doesn't really matter which of the two we pick. And with the, your add in one and your add in two, right now you have hard coded the one, you have the five. But mm -hmm. if, if I just wanted. I could surgically remove the one and five and put in like a random number generator in each, and then I would have a random quiz each time. In other words, it might pick two and four. Yes, but the problem with that is if I hard code these values, I could put them in an include file. What if I used a random number generator? It would generate different numbers when it went to grade it than when I generated the quiz. So I'd have to have a way to get those things. You have to save the number generated and send that to the answer page. Yep, exactly. It would have to save the number generated and send it to the answer page. And I could easily do that on the URL. That's another possibility of something that we could do next time. All right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a simple, simple thing. And, and the, key, the key in doing this is, is really understanding, and, and it's why I always draw that cloud diagram. The, the I don't know, I don't want to sound artsy here, but, but the dance, the interaction, the, the, the way that the client and server interact with each other, that's key in understanding this. Because that's what told you that there's a problem if we do the random numbers. Because the client is going to do, do, generate the random numbers to generate the quiz. When I go to grade it, if it generates another set of random numbers, it's going to give you wrong answers most of the time, unless there's a great coincidence. It may even give you, it may even tell you you got one right that you actually got wrong because it generated a problem that matched the, the wrong answer that you put in. All right. Obviously, this is math related, but I was thinking.
thinking in terms of uh, a text-based answer, mm -hmm. and my thought process was if I had an array that said cat, kitten, feline, and someone typed in any one of those three, hey, what what animal goes meow? As long as I type in any one of those three, I'd get it right. But if I typed in dog or mm -hmm. wolf or turtle, I'd get wrong. I was guess I was curious about that matching a text answer to an array list. Uh, well, what you'd have to do is exactly what you described. For each question, um, you'd have to do one of two things. You'd either define the single correct answer, and it would have to match that. Now, you could adjust for case. So, in other words, you wouldn't. You, you could match upper and lo uh, matching upper and lower case isn't that big of a deal. But if you want to match cat and feline, you would have to have an array for each question that, rep that had the list of acceptable answers. That's probably why you don't see a lot of computer-generated quizzes act like that. Because even there, you forgot kitty, all right? You forgot um, kit cat, what? Yeah, OK. Uh, there's a lot of things that you, th there, there are possibilities that you could put in that are reasonable answers that you'd reject, you know. Um, that's why a better example for that would be to have a multiple choice where you said what, what animal meows, dog, horse, orangutan, cat, and then you'd pick that and then you'd know that. So. Those free form ones, either you're going to be ruthless and count uh, an answer wrong if you do kitty versus kitten, all right, or you build a complex sort of answer that looks at a lot of possibilities that probably still is going to miss one. Kitty cat, all right, or whatever. So, we'll continue exploring this next time. And again, I apologize for the confusion of the example. But, that being said, a good mental exercise for you would be to take this code that I'm going to post today and try to make it work for multiple questions. All right? So, if there's something, if you're bored this weekend, um... Take a, take a stab at that, and we'll look at that on Monday. All right. We'll see you over in lab.